Hey gang, and welcome to the Worksheet Solutions Walkthrough for the Worksheet Ether Synthesis. If you're new to Worksheet Solutions Walkthroughs, they go a little bit like this. You've seen an instructional video and you've most likely sought out the worksheet associated with it. You did the worksheet, maybe you checked your answers and you're wondering why certain solutions were there. How did they get arrived at? Well, if you're asking that question, you're in the right place. We're gonna go through this worksheet. I'll show you how I arrived at the answers I provided and hopefully give you the answers you were looking for. In problem one, we have a mixture of, well, they're all complete the reaction questions, but some of them are predict the product, some of them are provide an intermediate, and yeah, we have four of them, so let's just go right through uh, uh, problem number one. Okay, so in this example up top, so remember for ether synthesis, right, and that's kind of what's going on here, we can take the SN2 route or we can go an SN1 route. So if we look up here, I think you're seeing we have an alkoxide, right? This is really just, right? This is O minus, Na plus. So we have a good nucleophile, and you can see we have a primary substrate, good leaving groups. This is an SN2 pathway, right? And we're making an ether, right? So the arrows for this would absolutely go that oxygen would, it's going to use one of its lone pairs. It's going to attack this carbon right here. We will eject our leaving group. Even though this is SN2, we don't have to worry about any you know, stereochemical inversion, right? This is just going to be, our focus is gonna be the regiochemistry here, right? Just connecting the pieces, right? So we have one, two, three carbons that are oxygen. So over here, I'll do one, two, and three. There's our oxygen. And on the other side of this ether, you can see we're gonna have one, two, and three. So it's symmetrical. So just because we have different things going on on different sides of the arrows. I've provided boxes where the arrows need to go, or sorry, the answers need to go. All right, so in problem two, this, you can see in this first step, right, we have to predict what's happening here, and then we're gonna take the result of this, combine it with this, um, so, uh, you know, good sub, we can see a substrate right there, and then predict a product. So when we provide, uh, when we have an alcohol and we, you know, I could include this little circle up here to say this is elemental sodium, but that's going to help us produce an alkoxide. Really, this is just the preparation of a good nucleophile. So that's what that, what that is, that, that is how that will proceed. Then we are going to be doing SN2 because we see a primary substrate, a good leaving group. So we will attack, see my marker, just like this. So we can see, I'm gonna go ahead and draw what was my nucleophile. Then I will bond from this oxygen to this carbon that I'm going to dot. So if you need to mark carbons like we've done in the past, don't be afraid to do that. So if I draw a line, then I have that carbon. So that is a carbon that is outside a benzene ring. So that I can then draw the rest of my ring and making sure I don't lose any carbons along the way. Moving on. So here we see a little splash of SN1 because we see sulfolysis. So we can see that well, let me stay true to my, my green convention. Once bromine leaves like this, we have carbocation. We'd have to check if there are any shifts. Luckily, no carbocation shifts, whether it be hydride or methyl, we're good to go. And we can see, you know, in these SN2 problems, right, we have O minus, good nucleophile, it can react on its own. But here we have a carbocation because we see we have a, a nucleophile that's not as good, right? That nucleophile is gonna need some help, it needs a more reactive reactant. So in this situation, now this alcohol, neutral alcohol, can go ahead and attack right here. Again, we'd have to abide by any SN1 rules like racemic mixtures. Uh, we don't have to worry about that because we are attacking carbon that's not a stereo center. So in this, uh, and, and you can assume there's going to be a cleanup step, but I would go ahead and draw the bigger piece right here. Oh, lost the carbon. So there, and then the next line I will draw will be the carbon here. I can dot it here, and then I can show that it's dotted right there. So the oxygen is connected to that dot carbon, which then has a methyl group and a methyl group off of it. So that is the ether we end up with. Last but not least, now it's gonna, this is gonna be an ether cleavage. I'm giving you this, and then you get the product. Now, you technically can get two products here, and I only gave one because I believe it's the better product. So alcohol, or sorry, oxygens, electronegative atoms, right? Love positive things. So in the presence of a strong acid like HBr, and this is what we would call a nucleophilic acid, because once we, let me just show you, go ahead and do this. Once 
the oxygen picks up H+, which I will draw over here what happens. I'll do this in blue. We have a positive charge on the oxygen. This remains unchanged, and now we produced Br minus, so which is nucleophilic. So that's why it's kind of like a nucleophilic acid. So in this scenario, right now we have a good leaving group. So it's really is that either this is going to be our leaving group, or this will be our leaving group. We need to figure out whether we're going to attack this carbon I'm dotting or this carbon I'm asterisking, and make sure you attack the more sterically available carbon if there's a difference. And there is because this carbon is secondary, this carbon is tertiary, right? So attack. Uh, sorry, well, okay, sorry, this is secondary, this is primary, I apologize. So, well, let's attack the more sterically available carbon, which is this carbon right here. Electrons go over there. So, we have isopropyl brom, or sorry, isobutyl bromide over here. And then over here we produce isopropyl alcohol, okay? So technically, on a test, if you had these reversed, like you had isopropyl bromide and uh, isobutyl alcohol, if this was something that was five points, I'd maybe expect you to get like two out of five or three out of five because you completed an ether cleavage, but maybe not the best ether cleavage. Okay, that does it for problem one. On to two. Okay, gang, to round out this pretty short worksheet, we have uh, an A and B on problem two. We have to draw the mechanisms for A, B, and then as a bonus, right, because we always love to do extra in OCHEM, uh, we need to, we are told that B is a better, more favorable reaction, and we need, we need to explain why. I know they're not exactly the same, but they're like roughly the same, and there's one key difference. Okay, so in doing the mechanism for A, right, so quick breakdown, we can see we have um, a great alkoxide, right, a sodium alkoxide, and we have a very sterically available substrate with a good leaving group. We can see just very straightforward ether synthesis. So if I were to draw the mechanism, which is super short, just one step. If I want to keep the spectator eye around, which you do not have to do unless, you know, in your class you have to. All we're going to do is attack the very sterically available primary substrate carbon boot off chlorine, right? This is SN2. It's happening in one step, concerted mechanism. We don't have to worry about any stereochemical inversion. And we produce our lovely ether product. Let me make sure I don't lose any carbons. One carbon outside the cyclopentane ring, an oxygen, three carbons that were came from our substrate. Good to go. Make sure, okay, didn't forget anything. All right, so in this reaction right here, uh, there is, you can mechanistically find, you know, the OH getting treated with the sodium and showing how that goes to O minus and whatnot. We don't really worry about that. So in this first, so I'm just going to actually jump ahead to, to this now. So in one step, what you will see is this oxygen, right? Now we have a situation where our substrate and our nucleophile are prepackaged into one molecule. So intramolecularly, we can go ahead and do this, attack this very sterically available primary carbon. We can boot off our good leaving group that is bromine. And then we produce, right, because one, right, so right, count the oxygen, two, three, four, five, and six. This is a great reaction because we're forming a six-membered ring. We know six-membered rings are everywhere in nature, zero ring strain you know, allows carbon or any atom to have a, uh, you know, any, you know, adhere to a tetrahedral structure, all that good stuff. So, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, connect the dots, two, three, four, five, and six. It all works out. Two mechanisms, really one steppers in my opinion. But what I think is the more interesting question is why is reaction B? It's a given that B is more favorable of a reaction overall than A energy wise it comes down to and we're going to lean on our thermodynamic knowledge from gen chem that's right we're throwing it all the way back to gen chem so this matters right i told you we'd be using these tools all throughout ochem one and two it comes down to if we look at each reaction if i want to do an analysis of how many reactants i have and how many products i have it would go like this right here we need one we have one reactant 
that goes to one product. And that's because we have our sub substrate and our nucleophile packaged within one molecule. Up top, you can clearly see we have two reactants that form one product. And I'm, I'm ignoring spectators, right? So, in this, you know, if, if that's the analysis we're gonna go with, um, it's clear to see that up here, we go from more reactants to fewer products. Our system has less things running around in solution, bumping into the walls, bumping into other molecules. That is one other way of saying our system up here gets more ordered. So, that another way to say is that our delta S for this reaction is unfavorable. So our entropy in this reaction above is bad, whereas down here, the delta S is neutral. I don't know if it's a little bit positive or a little bit negative, right? You'd actually have to crunch some numbers that you could get from thermodynamic tables. We don't worry about that. So what you could say is delta S is roughly neutral. So this comes down to actually breaking out the Gibbs free energy equation. Long story short is that this reaction down here, delta G is a measure of spontaneity. This reaction, holding everything equal, right? I know they're not the same reaction, but they're similar. This reaction is, more, I'm telling you, it's more spontaneous, and the reason bec is because the entropy here is better than the entropy up top because of the fact that the system stays the same amount of ordered here. The system gets more ordered up here. And remember, entropy is a measure of disorder. The universe is always heading towards more disorder. So because we stay the same order, our, the, our orderliness of the you know, our system here is, is the same. It gets worse up here. And that's the justification for me telling you that this reaction is more favorable overall or more spontaneous than this reaction up top. Don't hold me to it if you actually grab a thermodynamic table and run the numbers. I just wanted to pick a similar-ish looking thermodynamic uh, ether forming reaction. So just supposed to be qualitative, certainly not quantitative. Okay gang, thank you for tuning in and I hope if you were looking for some answers, some explanations, you got them. If you're watching this video, that means you have supported Joe Chem financially, you've thrown some money and supported the website and I can't thank you enough. I hope this tool, one, I'm so happy you're using it, I'm so humbled you're using it. I hope it's everything you're looking for and propelling you to success in organic chemistry. I'm so glad you're using it right now and I hope you're using it as far as you need it, whether that be the end of OCHEM 1 or the end of OCHEM 2, but no matter what, I hope to see you all in the next video.